In the 18th century, there was a mathematician called Euler. And Euler is one of the most famous mathematicians of all time, and in particular, he really got graph theory rolling. And the problem that initially motivated him was this. There is a place in Königsberg, in ancient Prussia, and in that city there is a river, and in that river there are two islands. And connecting the mainland on both sides and the two islands, there were seven different bridges. So the question Euler had was this. Is it possible that you can walk through this configuration of islands and bridges in some way where you walk across every single bridge once? Not twice, not zero times, exactly once for every single bridge. So I, I sat down and tried this myself, so like one example would be this kind of path. And what I noticed very quickly was that when I did that first path, there was one bridge that was missing, or if I tried to get that bridge, I'd have to go over other bridges twice. Now, Maybe I just have a bad path here. Maybe you can pause the video and find a path that works. Or maybe you can't. But even if you can't, do you know that it's impossible? Or is it just that you and I haven't thought of one? Now, we're not going to answer this question for a couple videos. But we're going to use this to motivate our definitions in graph theory. So what I want to do when I look at this particular island here is I realize that there's sort of four pl main places to stand when you think of them all sort of clumped together. There's the A and the D here, which are the two land masses on either side of the river, and then the B and the C are the two different islands. Now, if I'm trying to walk through here, I try to look at the number of connections, and what I can do is draw a sort of little pathway that connects each of what we call these vertices, the A, B, C, D. Now, the key point is that the exact location of the A and B, as long as they're on the same land mass, doesn't really matter. The exact way I draw the path between, say, A and B doesn't matter as long as it goes over the one bridge. So I can sort of wiggle this whole thing around a little bit, which makes me think, why don't we just get rid of the map entirely and just sort of study this configuration? And if you prefer, it kind of looks a little bit messy and hand-drawn right now, why don't we just go and clean it up and make it a little bit more of a straightforward thing? So what I've come up with is the idea of a graph. So formally what we say is that a graph is something with vertices, the A, B, C, D, and edges. So the way I formally define this is that I'm looking at a pair of things, a V and an E. The V is just a set of vertices, in this case the A, B, C, D. And the E, standing for edges, is a list of two element subsets of the vertices. So in particular, uh, the subset which is A, B, is an edge that goes from the vertex A to the vertex B. So it's a two element subset with a starting point and an end point, which are both vertices. So in this specific one that I have here, let's codify it exactly, my vertices, my A, B, C, D, those are what I will call my vertices, and then my edges are all the different connections. So I see in the graph that there are two different ways I can go from A to B. So I write down the two element subset bracket AB, I write that down twice. And likewise, there's sort of one connection from C to D, so I put one of those into my edge set. Now, some of you might recall that back when we did set theory, we said that a set, it didn't matter whether you had repetitions, and it didn't matter what the order was. Well, technically, this is going to be called something called a multi-set, where I'm saying I do care about repetitions. If I repeat them twice, that is a different thing than repeating them once. So this is truly a multi-set. But the order of it still doesn't matter. So it didn't matter whether you listed the order of the edges differently, it just says, is there a connection between C and D? That's all that matters. Now, I have a particular configuration in the plane when I chose to go and draw this. But what about the following thing? This is a different graph. It's still got an A, B, C, D, and it's got a bunch of connections between them. Is it the same graph or is it a different graph? Well, I think it actually represents the exact same set. So, for example, the AB, there's two ABs down here and two ABs up there. There's two BDs up here and two BDs down there. So, indeed, even though this looks very different from the configuration that came out when we were studying the seven bridges of Königsberg, even though it's completely different looking than that, it really represents the same graph because it has the same vertices and the same edges between the same vertices. Indeed, if I took the A, B, C, D and I say, okay, what if I make it 1, 2, 3, 4? It, it all looks the same, but I just relabeled it. Again, it's the same graph. The idea that I'm doing here is called a graph 
isomorphism. And it says that, look, you can go and change the colors of any of these graphs, you can change the labeling of them, you can rearrange them in space all you want. All that matters is that you have effectively the same list of points and all the same connections between them. That's the loose idea. I'll add a slightly more precise definition of a graph isomorphism down into the description. So the point is this. If you have many situations in real life where you've got sort of nodes and connections between them, another example, by the way, is Facebook, where you have a whole bunch of people who are vertices, and then if you're friends, you have a connection between them, and all sorts of different examples in the real world, you have graphs. Now, coming up in future videos, we're going to talk about some properties of these graphs, something called the degree of a graph, we're going to prove some theorems about graphs, and using that, we're going to be able to finally state the answer to this seven bridges of Königsberg problem, whether it's possible to take some path over those bridges that hits every one of them exactly once.